So, so welcome everyone. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Happy Friday, happy lunchtime. Um, I just, uh, you know, just want to uh, to welcome everyone. I'm, I'm Keenan Irwin. I'm the brand manager here at Made Brave, uh, and I have with me Stephen Haddon, who's our creative director, uh, and then I have Andrew Doby, who's our founder. Um, and really, just uh, just quickly for uh, a quick intro for you guys. Um, if anybody here hasn't, uh, maybe isn't familiar with us, um, you know, we're, we're made brave. We are a, a creative, a global strategic brand agency. There we go. Now it's moving. Um, and we have about 40 people on our team. Um, we have all kinds of, we have business and brand strategists. We have marketers, we have designers, we have animators, we have illustrators, um, and we do things like uh, we also have a production team that does films, 3D animations, photography. Uh, we do UX and UI design. Uh, we do digital design systems, websites, uh, creative tech, VR, AR, all the stuff. Um, and then uh, we also uh, just just here really quick. Uh, last year we won the Drums Top 100 Independent Agencies for 2019. Um, we also won the campaign Best Places to Work. Uh, in 2020, uh, and then we've also been shortlisted for the Marketing Society's Employer Brand of the Year Award. Uh, so fingers crossed for that one. We'll find out at the end of the month. Um, we've worked with a number of amazing brands over the years, uh, many of them being global businesses and across different sectors and industries, um, which is really great because it gives us the opportunity to kind of cross pollinate ideas uh, from all over the world. Um, we used to spend our days in our brand new beautiful studio um which we moved into just at the start of the year just in time for for covid so it's been a little while um since we've been in there uh we'll get back in there soon uh i've been saying that for months <laughs> hopefully that's <laughs> true soon uh but you know we just really believe in collaboration um and working together um and there's just tons of spaces all over the office for us to do that there's our bar um and our photo studio um our quiet space there couple of boardrooms. Um, so anyway, I'll put that away really quick and we'll just kind of get on to the next the next bit here. Um, so, you know, for, for today, uh, you know, for some of you that have been following us along, we've been kind of on this relaunch strategy. And, you know, we I think the original, you know, initially we thought, well, this virus is here and then it's going to be gone. Um, you know, there, there's there's this, this vaccine. Hopefully that's going to help. Um, but we really just don't know day to day. There's plenty of uncertainty out there. So it's really just kind of taking things a step at a time um, and trying to strategize and kind of navigate through this time. Um, you know, so we've been kind of following along with that and trying to help however we can and just talking about, um, you know, diff different, um, different things to look at. So, uh, different strategies. So, you know, um, before now we've talked about brand evolution, how you can prototype your brand to kind of, uh, just kind of use content on the fly. Uh, you know, your, your brand isn't this static thing. It can change. You can mold it, uh, through time as you go. Um, we, we've also talked about content trends uh, that have come out of the lockdown. It's been really interesting, um, you know, and, and where we think those trends are heading. You know, we talked about how Hollywood's been using virtual production in the past. Uh, Billy Eilish just did a live concert using virtual production. Um, so, you know, with, with COVID kind of happening the way it is, um, you know, probably you know, that, that capability is going to become more and more accessible and, and give brands kind of a competitive edge um, where, you know, where we can't do as much live action. Um, so go check out uh, both of those. Or they're, they're actually, I think, four or five videos now that are up on YouTube if you want to see those. Um, but today we're going to be talking about brand life stages. And hopefully that's why all of you are here is to learn a little bit more about that um, and how we define them. So we're going to talk about brand maturity, what it is, how mature brands are able to stay relevant and kind of last the test of time. Um, and then also, you know, for, for each of your, you know, each of your individual businesses, you know, how can we, what can you do to measure which life stage you're in? And then now, you know, how do you strategize? How do you get to the next one? Um, and then, you know, so we're going to go through all of those. And then Andrew and Steven are going to have some takeaways for us. And then we'll wrap it up with kind of a Q&A. Um, and let me just say, I'll kind of, I'll kind of chime in with this as, as we go through, but if you have questions, uh, throughout the, the stream here, throughout the chat, uh, just put them in there, um, and we'll try to get to them on the fly. If not, we can get to them at the end, but just, just chuck them in there as we go along. 
Um, so if this is your first time with us, we're going to take a slightly different approach to kind of a standard uh, webinar. This is more of a conversational thing. Um, you know, I've kind of I've given these guys a bunch of questions to answer, um, and I've given them time to prepare, of course. Um, but my watch time. Like, yeah. well, I gave them enough. Time. Nuts. <laughs> this was yesterday afternoon, um, and so yeah. So we're just going to kind of chat through these, um, and like I said, make sure to to put your questions in there. Um, so let's let's uh, just kind of dive in. I thought you know probably a good starting point would be to to talk about brand and how we see it. Um, so Andrew, if if, if you want to kind of kick off, you know what what is brand and and how do we define it here? That may brave. Sure. Thanks, Kieran. So first of all, just before I begin, just thanks to everyone for joining us, spending your lunch with us today. Uh, nice to see you all here. So yeah, brand, um, it's one of those questions when people ask you what is a brand, it's quite overwhelming. And I think, you know, even for us who work in a branding agency, sometimes to articulate what, what brand is can be quite challenging. Um, and, you know, you know, I think when you when you go off into the internet and you Google what is brand, you know, you you'll come up with a different um, point of view. And, and the, you know, everyone that's listening here today, if I asked you all for a definition of brand, I'm pretty sure everyone would have a different way. And it's not that any of these ways are wrong. Is that there's there's so many facets to brand. There's so many parts and moving parts within a brand that, that, that there's so what well, has to be so many ways to describe it. Uh, and you know, as as people, we're we're learning, and you know, brand is evolving and continuously evolving. So that that thinking always progresses but maybe maybe what helps is that if first of all talk about what a brand is not um you know often people think a brand is a logo they think it's you know an identity system now those those are important parts of a brand however you know as as we'll learn today and hopefully we'll start to explore is there's there, there's just so much more to it and sometimes I find that when we start thinking about brand, it's, it's, it's worth, you know, looking at some how other people describe it um, and, and and looking at those and sort of considering, you know, the point of view that they've come to. Um, so, you know, I real, I've got a couple sitting beside me here that, you know, Richard Branson, he often talks about brands simply your reputation. Um, we've got Jeff Bezos, um, for those who don't know, is the founder of Amazon. He says it's what other people say about you when you're not in the room. So that, that kind of ties to reputation, doesn't it? And that's what, you know, you know, we're here just now, we're on this live chat, or you guys are, are listening to this and you're not in your businesses and you're not out talking to people. What are other people saying about you? And, um, you know, I think um, the Jessica Walsh um, is a kind of designer from New York. She, she said quite nicely as well, and it's got a completely different angle here. If no one hates it, no one really loves it. And again, if we think about that for a second, that what that talks about is that, you know, great brands and great ideas are often divisive, right? So they're, they're not going to be for everyone. And often, I think where we get overwhelmed when we're trying to create a brand is that we often feel like that we have to compete with everyone in the world, right? And that's overwhelming. And that's only come a lot these days because we've got the kind of openness of uh, technology and social media. We now do feel like that. You know, previously we used to we used to only feel like we're competing with those around us in our area because that's only who we heard from. Now, the great news is that we don't have to compete with everyone in the world, um, you know, um, and we don't need millions and millions of followers and people to, to grow a great business in today's world is that we only we're only competing with those in our category so immediately you can take all those thoughts about all the brands we're trying to 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 to, to compete against and we can remove that um, and then you know um you know you don't actually need thousands and millions of followers to grow an amazing brand um you know and, and i think we often look at pages and and brands and people that have these things and and they've kind of almost come from you know back in 2012 when facebook were cranking their algorithm and letting everyone grow millions of followers a lot of people ended up with millions of followers um and you know today if you try and do that um you know you're almost trying to compete against something that's not possible anymore so i just want to get that out of the way that, that we're, we're going to start this off and positive that we're that this is all achievable and it's all achievable for for anyone um now um you know i suppose from my perspective why i'm on the on the this live stream today is that i perhaps got three perspectives that i can help share and i can help get my thoughts on um in this session today um i've been a designer so that's, i started off my journey as a designer a photographer and i worked in agencies kind of for eight years 
um, before starting up Made Brave. So, so I worked creatively. I'm still creative. Uh, I'm not going to lose that part of me, but very much so. My my day was filled very much being a designer. Um, so I've got that perspective of having done that and working with people's brands. At Made Brave, Made Brave is now nine years old as a business. And during those nine years, um, I've worked with Stephen, uh, Keenan, and a whole host of extremely talented people to shape, build, evolve, grow, and rebrand hundreds of businesses. And so we've had a, you know, we're really fortunate, in fact, in the job that we do, that we get like a real inside look at so many businesses, so many brands, and we're able to kind of get that experience. So I've got that experience as well. And I suppose lastly, where, you know, I can bring some value to today. And, you know, there might be some of you guys that are, you know, at the start of this journey or that are, have been running your own businesses. Now, so I've grown Made Brave. I founded Made Brave. It was me alone. Um, I started with lit literally more than a, f a, f a few pennies in my pocket. And, uh, you know, we've grown it to, um, to where it is now. So I've, I've been on that journey of the last nine years and I've, I've, I've learned a hell of a lot. And, you know, um, I actually put a post out this morning to say, that, you know, the more I learn, the more I realize, that, you know, there's a hell of a lot more to learn and the less you know. And, but I, I suppose, you know, I'm a big believer in sharing um, wisdom and sharing things as we learn. I believe it comes back to you. And I believe if you put some goodness out into the world that, um, you know, you'll receive it back tenfold. So I, I suppose I can help a little bit today in sharing, you know, some of the lessons I've learned in growing a team, growing a business and growing a brand um, that has hung around for nine years um, and is still here during COVID. Um, so, yeah, I suppose Stephen, myself and, you know, many other great people, Keenan included, um, have, have developed this idea over the last few years that I suppose brand um, brands take on many similar traits to, to humans, right, um, through our evolution. And I know it sounds very strange, right, but we're going to try and break it down today and we're going to try and make it a little bit easier to consume. Um, and we, we often say that, you know, when we're trying to figure out how to grow a brand, the challenge is, and as I said earlier, you go onto Google and you do a Google search and you say, how do you build a brand? And who, how, how, I, it's, it's so confusing. There's so many different viewpoints and we don't know where to start. So we've developed this idea around sort of brand as a human and humanizing your business um, as a kind of framework. Now, it's not to say, you know, there's no other ways that you can build brands, but today we're going to share some of our thinking. You might agree with it, you might not, but remember what Jessica Wall says, if you don't, people don't love it, people don't hate it, no one really loves it. So I suppose we're sharing our collective thoughts in the hope that it helps give you a little bit of a guidance, gives you a little bit of a framework that you can start to look inwardly at your own business and you can start to realize what part of the journey are we on. And much like a human, when we grow from being a baby to a toddler and to a child and to a teenager and to a fully grown adult, uh, a mature adult, we hopefully through that journey, we mature, right? And our thoughts mature and we learn things. And um, I suppose we, we start to value and, 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 and look at things differently in life. So we're going to kind of correlate that to how kind of businesses grow. Um, and how brands themselves grow. But to kick us off, um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of context about where we're going. I'm going to pass you over to Mr. Stephen Haddon. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, yeah, as Andrew said there, you know, like one of the things that we really believe in because of the, um, the ability that we think it gives people to, to help to understand is the, the concept of this idea of brand as a human, brand as a person. You know, there's a lot of reasons why we think that that's a that's a good thing. You know, like first of all, people understand people. You know, like you might even say that our humans are experts in humans. You know, and um, we spend our lives socializing, interacting. Uh, you know, what you know, working with each other. Uh, you know, all all kinds of things that you know. If we want to try and break down something, as Andrew said, that is quite complex, like a brand, or could be quite daunting, could be quite um difficult to know what to do then if we start to think about it as a human hopefully that can start to break it down in a bit that we can start to go all right okay i can understand that i don't need to be a well uh, schooled marketing expert and have done lots of degrees and stuff i can understand that. i know how i interact with people i know how i do that it starts to you know put it into a little bit of context that hopefully allows us to build you know but you know as, as a person you know like a we're not the we're not just the clothes we wear. We're not just the hairstyle we have. We're not just the face that we have and stuff like that. But the sum of all of these parts, you know, you know, it's about what we believe in, what we value, 
you know, what drives us, what motivates us, what inspires us, the character we give, our actions, more importantly as well. You know, these are all the things that create that impression. And it's the same things with the brands as well. You know, it's not just about the logo. It's not just about an advert. It's about a sum of everything. It's, a, it's about the people within. You know, all these things come together to create that impression, to, you know, put it in that place where what are other people going to say about you when you're not in the room? Um, you know, and also the times that we're living in now, you know, like none more so than ever, the need for adaptability, the need for flexibility, the need to be able to change, you know, and that's what humans are great at. That's why we've evolved to have 7 billion people on the planet and stuff like that. You know, our greatest strength is our adaptability as humans. You know, and, you know, if we think about a brand, if that is your greatest strength, then you'll be able to then adapt to any situation. And you've seen by a lot of great brands and the ones who really truly know themselves um, and know their customers, they're the ones that are really strong in this situation and are, are finding ways to do for others um, that, you know, like a, a, will also give back to them in the way that Andrew said. You know, I, I'm also a big believer that put out what you know um, and you'll get it back tenfold. And the minute you stop learning is the minute you stand still. You know, so and it's the same with brands as well. You know, you can correlate all that together, you know, and they, you know, like from that adaptability and stuff like that, you can also think about it in terms of the life stages as well. You know, as Andrew had said, the, um, you know, thinking about the, the evolution and the growth and stuff like that. And we're going to come to that in a bit, um, you know, as well. And, you know, just a little bit, we're not going to go deep into the history of branding um, and stuff like that. But, you know, like when it was first there, the mark on the cow was obviously the first thing. It was a mark. It was like your name or your face. You know, that, that was the identifying the cow as belonging. You know, and then as we've kind of brands have matured and stuff like that, you know, like that identification was important in marketplaces and things like that. Um, you know, and, and more and more when we were able to communicate to a wider aspect, we were able to then, you know, define it in terms of a look, in terms of how it spoke, you know, and then, you know, you know, in the in the 60s and 70s, a lot of that was defined by advertising. You know, that was our, the main piece of communication that uh, people would put out and to help define the brands. But, you know, like, as Andrew said, technology's changed, the way people interact has changed, the way people have uh, you know, like grown of change and stuff like that. The the logo and things like that are just a component part. It's all that things that make up the impression of a person, make up the impression mm -hmm. of a human, are the things that really matter. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's being democratized if you want. You know, and, and you know, you need to kind of wait, find a way to like almost form that consensus with your audience. Um so that they they want to be friends with you. You know, and, mm -hmm. and again that's another good reason why to and uh, we think that, you know, thinking of it like a human helps start to unlock some of these things, helps start to, you know, hopefully give us a place where it becomes a little less scary and a little more empowering that we can all look at how we can build brands, how we can make something special and inspire other people internally and externally. Yeah. And maybe, maybe I could jump in there, um, yeah, Stephen. The, the, there's a point that you made that... Um, you know, I think in the past, you know, obviously brand was created originally as an identifier, you know, for cattle, for sugar, for, you know, for products that people sold. And in the past, you know, 30, 40 years as well, it's also always been kind of focused on selling products or services. And I think what started mm -hmm. to shift and change in the last few years, the last 10, definitely anyway, is that people have started to realize that brands, you know, have much more, um, more to, to play with or not play with, but they've, they've got much more responsibility now. And it's not only about products and services and often, you know, what, what, what we use brands for are to grow tribes, to grow following, to grow, you know, we're as human beings, we're social creatures right we like to surround ourselves with people that believe in the same things as us we'd like to surround ourselves and 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 surround ourselves with people that you know have um you know similar thoughts and process to us as well um, and i think you know when we talk about this kind of brand as a person idea you know very much um you know when, when you have to grow a business or you grow a following or you'd have to try and persuade anyone to kind of uh, listen to what you're saying um you know um, you know, purpose is often a thing that, um, you know, has been has become very apparent over the last 10 years. And you've got the likes of Simon Sinek, who was trying to, you know, everyone's trying to codify what makes brands and how we make them, how we grow them, how we how we do it um, the best ways. And Simon Sinek, for those, you know, I'm sure everyone has come across Simon Sinek. He did a great way of codifying um, this kind, kind of thing, the purpose that, you know, it wasn't a new thing, but he, he found a novel way of describing it. 
Um, now, you know, people can often get focused on whether, you know, they love purpose-driven branding or they dislike it. Um, and we're not here today to say it's great or not great. You know, um, you know, I think what 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 part of this is, is that, you know, purpose alone does not build a brand or build a business. Purpose is great. And I believe that, you know, it, it gives us a kind of focus. It gives us a North Star. It gives us a direction to where we're taking a brand or a business. And it gives us this, something to kind of check on in to make sure um, to, to make sure we're heading in a direction. But, you know, very much as a person, um, you know, we also need a vision, right? So we need to, we need to, if, if we're going to grow a business, we're going to grow a brand or, we're, you know, grow a following, anything like that. We need to tell people where we're going. And that becomes really important in, in, a, in a business. So we've got to, we've got to really clearly articulate what we're trying to achieve. And that will attract people that believe in that purpose and that believe in that same vision. And they're on that similar journey. Um, you know, but again, those are not enough. And, you know, um, you know, we're a big believer in kind of purpose married up with values. So we all have values, everyone listening today, you know, and the three of us will have, you know, we'll have different values. We might have some that align um, with others and we might have similarities. And, you know, we like to think of values as kind of, you know, your your beliefs or your behaviors you want to see within your, your organization, your brand, your business, um, you know, and you're looking for people that get that. And that's why, you know, Jessica Walsh's um, point is so valid that, you know, some people will hate your brand or your business or and they just won't get it because they won't align with that purpose. They don't see the same vision and their values might be very opposite to you. Now that, again, that's not a bad thing. We've got different people um, and we're all weird, wonderful and different in our own way. And we need different characters and we need different points points of view and that's what makes human beings and um, what we are um, but you know again looking as a person um, you know beyond these things so we kind of call those brand foundations right we need those we need we need to understand a bigger purpose beyond making money now making making money is is not a purpose we can't use that that, that can be a driver for business when we start but you know we like to build purposes around something bigger than that um, but you know beyond that we then you know as a brand as a human as you know, we have a tone of voice. So my tone of voice, um, you know, uh, well, well, first of all, we have tone of voice and we have personality. Now, I, I'd hope that my personality doesn't change hugely over time. Now, it does mature, it does um, soften, I'm sure, but my personality stays quite similar. And once we understand our personality, and we kind of, we need to kind of understand what the personality of our brand is what does change often though is my tone of voice so the way i speak to you today will be different how i speak to my nine-year-old son or you know my wife or you know in a boardroom i might talk my tone of voice and that's okay we can our tone of voice flexes in a business um and then you know as a as a human um what we bring to the world is you know we, we bring a skill we bring a benefit we bring a proposition and 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 in a business you know we better understand that we you know and i often say that needs to be kind of a given in your business right we've got to be good you know at doing what we do so at made brave we've kind of got to be good at being creative being strategic creating brands that kind of stuff um, you know and as a human you, you know we hone and you know we craft our proposition over time um and then you know um you know a big part of kind of branding and 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 again as a human uh, that's something we can relate to is that we all have a story and often um you know i, I like to kind of talk about how you know when we've got a you know our life story um you know sometimes we're looking back um on kind of our history and our, our past sometimes we have to talk about now and sometimes talk about the future but we've got to know our story, right? We've got to understand who we are, kind of what, what, where we, where we are in it, and how you know, and how and where we want to, um, you know, to, you know, to to kind of share that. And and I suppose you know we've seen over again the last ten years that social media people fumbled around on it for the first few years, and um, you know what we've seen is that the the people that have really grown in social media have really learned the storytelling aspects of it. They've really learned that, you know, the documentation of what they do and how they get there and sharing that knowledge and giving it back tends to grow the biggest followings. And that's because us as humans, we're hardwired. We're hardwired for storytelling. We've been doing it since we've been sitting around the fires and the caves and you know if you weren't here right now you'll be off watching netflix or you know or or some 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 box set um just now so we really you know really hardwired and um you know the, the, there's other aspects and we'll, we'll keep coming into them as we progress but you know the, the part i want to kind of make you think about just now is that you know when people think you know the whole brand is about this logo Stephen said it earlier on 
Your logo is like your face, right? It's, a, it's an identifier that reminds someone of all the other interactions they've had with you, right? So, so it's, you know, so, you know, what was my experience like with them? What was the product, you know, that I, you know, I bought from them or, you know, or the service I bought? What, you know, what have I heard about them? What is their reputation? That brand mark, that logo is just identifier, much like the human face. A human face does not dictate who we are. It just lets you know, oh, that's the person that I, I remember all these yeah. interactions with. So it's, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get in, I'll let you jump back in. Oh, that's okay. No, that's really good. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's, um, hopefully that kind of gives everybody kind of a base for, for kind of what we're going to talk about next. Um, so, you know, and, uh, you know, just to kind of recap there, Andrew's talking about just thinking about your brand as a person. And, you know, people, people have a, a face, they have a tone of voice, they have, they have a visual style, you know, I'm wearing this blue shirt today, yeah. that's my visual style. Um, and we could go, we could go, there's a lots and lots to go through. Um, and it's a lot to take on um, all at once. Um, but, um, or, or just to, to get your head around, um, but hopefully is, is kind of a simple way to understand it. Um, you know, so, so we, we, we were going to talk a, a little bit about life stages now. So, um, I'm wondering if, if one of you kind of wants to, to talk us through some of that, um, you know, what, what are some of these different life stages, um, and what are kind of some of the markers for each, would you say? Cool. Hadn't why, why jump in the first one, then you take the second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Good. so I suppose, yeah. Um, you know, we, 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 when we're trying to figure out kind of life stages of our businesses and our brands, you know, the way, the way I kind of tried to sort of articulate in my head was that when we start out in a brand or we start out in a business um you know we're very much in survival mode and it's the same as a human being right when we're when we're in those those years of our life everything is hand to mouth right and you know i'm thinking back to the beginning of made brave that first year is stressful right you're mm -hmm. you're trying to find income for yourself for your family you're, you know, if you start to grow and you have other people in your team, you've then got to find income for them, right? And we're in survival mode. And while we're trying to find income, we're actually doing the work as well, right? So whatever our business is, we've actually got to do the, the, the projects, the work, you know, sell products, whatever that may be. Um, meanwhile, we're also being an accountant, you know, running finance, running operations, um, everything, you know, finding office space, doing, there's so much. And, you know, I suppose you're also trying to figure out your place in the world, figure out your place in, uh, in the marketplace. You're trying to create a name for yourself somewhere or another so that you get customers, right? Because without customers, you know, our, our brands, our businesses don't survive. Um, and you're, you're learning and pretty much making all the mistakes, you know, and I can hand up testament to that. You know, that first year, you're, you've never done it before. So how, how can you know? And you just have to kind of get going. And yeah. I think, you know, a lot of businesses fail in the UK anyway in the first two years. And you can kind of see why. Um, it's it's bloody tough, you know, and I, and I really feel for anyone right now that started, you know, this year, you know, because um, it's a tough year and, I, you know, I have empathy for anyone going through that. And, you know, if it, you know, if it helps in any way, when I started, it was in a recession as well. And you can do it, you can get through it. And um, this is where you build a lot of resilience. And as a human, right in those early years this is where we're also building resilience we're learning and we hopefully get past those first few years of hand to mouth and we start to figure out where we are in the world and um yeah i suppose that's kind of the i kind of call, call them you know the survival early years of business yeah. Yeah. and when, once we get through that that's when you know we start to kind of i suppose get a little bit more into kind of child and into teenage years and stephen Haddon can maybe you know chat us through a little bit of that yeah, just just a, one quick point on the um, the early stages as well. You know, it tends to be, if you think of it, like I, I'm, you know, I have young children as well. You know, that's a big focus internally, big focus on learning, big focus on that development. You know, and that's why you know at the start the culture is really important. So all these things that we're talking about in terms of values and stuff like that, the guidance and, and things, you know, like you're really building up the culture of the business as well, and that becomes a vital bedrock for when you then move into the teenage years and stuff mm -hmm. like that, because you, you've got that kind of solid thing where people are united. You've got, you know, people that are behind the brand, people that are excited that can support each other within it. Because as Andrew said, it's not an easy thing to do, to, to run a business, to grow a business, to lead people, yeah. you know, to, to, you know, do your work day to day. And, um, you know, if you've got that kind of collective thing, it gets you through a lot of things. 
Um, you know, just like a child, they're learning how to be themselves. They're learning about the world around them. It's the same sort of thing. And if, you know, if you've got togetherness, it obviously really helps. It allows you to then move forward to when you get into that teenage years, you know, you're starting to find your voice a bit more. You know, and, you, and, and let's be clear here, we're not like being literal in years. These are like dog yeah. years. Right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some of these, some people get to teenage, uh, they mature faster than others, right? So let's, let, this is, we don't, we don't mean 15 years later. So yeah. 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 It, 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 Hello. Uh, sorry. Oh, right. Just let me jump in real quick. Sorry. Just as we're going through these, I just, I, I said I would remind people, um, go ahead and ask us a question. I know that we're we're covering a lot of topics here, so that that was kind of the initial stage. We're going to talk about um, kind of this next life stage. But if you guys have any questions, just chuck them there in the comments, um, and we'll get to them. All right, Stephen, on you go. Thank you, Keenan. Yeah, and uh, you know, as we're saying, you know, that, that that kind of next stage where you're moving on, there's an element of finding yourself a bit more. You built up a little bit of confidence within yourself. You're starting to know yourself. You're starting to express yourself a bit more. And, um, you know, you're doing that. There's a bit more experimentation. You know, there's a, bit, there's a bit more, a little bit of a bravery. Uh, and you're trying things. And you, really what you're trying to do is you're trying to find a way to build up the right value exchange. You know, you want yeah. to, you know, exchange that value to what customers, what people get from you internally and externally, uh, you know, and build that up. You know, you're like, you're less about copying others, you know. You don't, you know, again, you're more about I'm a bit more confident in myself. I know what, who I am. I know how I might want to articulate myself. And you're getting a bit more comfortable that not everybody's going to like it. And, mm -hmm. not, you know, and, and that's that thing, you know, like nobody wants to be me. You know, that's the worst thing you can be. Everyone wants yeah. to create a place where someone has an opinion on them, you know, because then that's a good thing, whether that opinion might be something that's not for me, that's okay, because it'll be for others, you know, mm -hmm. and that, that kind of, that next stage, you start to do that, you're, you're really honing that proposition, you know, you're, you're finding out the types of people you want to be friends with, you know, if we bring it yeah. back to the, the human thing, if the more you understand about yourself, the more you're going to be able to find the people you want to connect with, and that's what it's about, that connections, that are building up those things that people will say what you want them to say in the room when you're not there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and they, they, you know, they'll respond in the way that your actions, um, you know, have a, built up a good reputation or perception of you at that stage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we're starting to then move towards more maturity, um, you know, yeah. and, and, and uh, I'll maybe pass that over to Andrew to maybe talk a little bit more about when you get into that mature years. Yeah, well, maybe maybe before I get there, just on those kind of teenage years, I suppose what we're trying to get across here is that, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes businesses, when they start, they have real clear purpose, they have real clear values, they have all this thing and they're, you know, they have it all and they really know where they're headed. But some businesses don't. And that's OK as well. Right. So if you're in either of those camps, you know, don't worry, neither is correct. And, you know, I suppose practical example we've made brave you know we didn't start documenting our own brand you know for a couple of years now and that was um i suppose the reason was that you know i'm a big believer in kind of trying to build a, a business from the inside out around our people our culture and i kind of almost wanted it to be more than the sum of the parts in terms of everyone that was joining the business so I, yeah, I was clear about where we were heading, and that was a, we were ambitious. Um, but we also we wanted we knew something was working. We didn't specifically know what at the beginning, and we wanted to let it roll for a little while, right? So so don't feel that you need to define it immediately. But also, if you have defined it, don't feel that you can't change it, right? That's important as well. But I think you know a, a key takeaway kind of for those teenage years is is we, is we want to start documenting it. Now, the reason we want to start documenting it and getting it down on paper is that you then have something to work from and you have something to, um, I suppose, you know, keep a check of. And, you know, how we did it when in our early days is that we got everyone in the business. You know, why, why did you join Made Brave? Why are you Made Brave? Or what was it? What did you love about the brand? What did you, you know, what brought you here? And we try to figure out kind of commonalities in our business. And then we try to document them. Now, if I go back, and, you know, we now have a very clear understanding of our purpose, our vision, our values, our, you know, what makes the Made Brave brand what it is. But if I go back then and look at the, those documents, I bet you they're very, very different to what they are right now. And and that's because when we started documenting and we started putting it down, and that just, you know, get these bullet points out of your head, first of all. Don't think of it. Don't overthink it. We just need to get stuff down on paper. Um, you know, it, it allows us to go, you know, 
you know, it, we can we can sense check. We can sense check our actions, our behaviours, and you know, and we can see is that is that what we meant? Is that did we articulate that right? And I think, you know, they, as I say, they can shape and change. And I think where you know where we're kind of going with. Um, this next stage is, I suppose, by the teenage years, you know, you, you've gone through those horrible first couple of years, right, which are the stressful parts of business. You've now got battle scars and those battle scars have given you a story. And, you know, you've now been able to tell that story to the world. This is how I got through here. This is how I managed to get past. This is how I grew it. This is how I did it. We have a story. You've probably figured you probably had a few, um, you know, run ins positively and negatively and they've started to let you understand your values and you know what you're all about and you're maturing as a person and you know as a business as a brand and you know kind of what you're trying to attract um, and what you're not and you know as I say in the teenage years we start to document that and we start to find our voice I think Stephen said that you know we start to know who we are and we're not scared to talk like that and um, mm -hmm. you know I think when we start thinking about when we mature and you know we've gone through it as a business as well and I, and I think this is where brands get really great is that when you start realizing that it's not about how you look it's not about you know it's not about what you wear right your visual style it's not about that those are those are part of branding but they are the yeah. visual facade what really comes into play and it's not as well it's also not saying that i have a purpose and a values or values right it's putting them into action so where you get start to get real maturity in your brand is starting to to realize, and this is what happens to us as humans as well. We start to realize that all the you know all the things around us, all the things that we thought were important, are not important. And what's important is looking after people. And I love that brands are starting to think this way. They're starting to think, and this is because we've got social media, we've got transparency of information now. Is that you know it's about how we look after the people in our businesses is much more important than what your website looks like. If you if you look after the people in your business and in turn they look after customers and in turn they look after the world around them, that's going to have way bigger impact on your brand than any website is going to have or any rebrand or any visual style that you can do. And I think you know what what we're realizing as well is that the the brands are starting to take stances, right? And you know in the past brands would be scared to ever take a stance on anything. And yeah. Now, when you take a stance, again, it's divisive. You'll get someone will hate it and someone will like it. But I think what's great is that the where we seem to be going is that brands are starting to take a stance around things that will help improve the world, help improve the life of people and help care and think about people. Now, of course, I'm not naive. You know, of course, brands have to sell products, services. We have to sell services, you know, to keep everyone employed, to keep, you know, food on our table. But this can only be a good thing that the focus is not only on that. And we're starting to use power, influence, business for good. And we can see the likes of B Corp. If you've not searched B Corp, um, you know, we've got B Corp. It's becoming a thing. It's a, you know, it's a, <coughs> excuse me, I've got some sort of throat in my throat there. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, the brands are becoming conscious and they're having to become transparent. And I think, you know, it's a really, really nice thing. Um, Haddon, maybe you've got some um, points to, to to chuck in on that as well. I know you've got lots of wisdom. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, like... Well, I joked to death here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, like you said, you know, the, the those mature years, those those years where you can be able to do more, you know, like nowadays there's that expectation that people want more from brands they don't you know like if if, if brands have this a uh, um ability and influence around the world you know that is grown you know grown through providing good products and services and stuff like that people want to see that used for good people expect to see that used for good people want to see how brands and businesses can be able to complement what governments are doing what individuals can do you know and we're now in this you know this time where you know, people are looking to make changes for the better, and you know, and and I, and I, you know, like in terms of choosing to believe that uh, brands have a a positive role in that. That that's that's mm -hmm. my position, you know, and and you know, you can have different opinions on what it is, but that if 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 understanding values and understanding purposes, and and if it leads to good things, and if it leads to development, to positive change, to impacts then that's a place I want to be. That's a world I want to be involved in and where I want to be. And that, you know, that's what we try to help people 
do to go beyond the words on the paper. You know, it is the actions that are really important. You know, and I think you know every person as they grow and they mature, they become more like you get a more of a, a resilience and inner confidence and stuff like that. You are more willing to do that, to willing to speak. You know, like when I was maybe twenty, I might not have come on a place like this and spoke it. You know, at, yeah. on a webinar, and although uh, I'm nervous and uh, you know, and uh, hope that um, what I'm saying has a little bit of uh, you know resonance um, with some people. You know, like you do that because you have this inner thing and this confidence that you built up over time. And you know, it's the same with brands. They've they, they've got to that place where they want to do more as well. They they, they realize that there's more they can do, um, uh, should do, and want to do. And, you know, and, and you see some great examples of people doing that as well. You know, you've got your people who start out that way, you know, the Patagonia, you know, and I know Keenan, you're a, a, a big fan and you could probably speak more right. about Patagonia than, than I could. But, you know, that, that's one way to go. But then you get people who are evolving and trying to look for what they can do good in their own way. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes it's about changing and that's OK as well. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, you know, why the human thing works really well for me is it helps put in context that a brand is an organic thing. It's not a fixed thing. It's not rules. It's not a Bible. It's 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 something that has to evolve all the time. It evolves with people. It evolves with the world. It evolves with the change. But if you if you know yourself, you're in a much stronger position to be able to deal with that changes in technology, that involvement in the world, and um, that you can act in the right way. Um, and then when you take a change of direction, when COVID happens, you know, if you know yourself really well, you can then be able to do something that is for the benefit of much more than just yourself. Um, you know, and again, that that positive impact is the power that brands have. Um, you know, something that I'm really passionate about and, and, and excited. And, mm. um, well, as you can see, I'm, I'm talking. There's, there's, there's a big question there from Jim Fraser. It says that Dave Trott says, initially, people fall in love with your product, not your brand. So it's a good question, Jim. And um, I think there's there, there's a focus, and often people think it's brands are all about selling products or services. And I think what has changed in today's world is that, you know, brands are also for the people within the businesses. And I think that 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 sort of viewpoint um, where you know where it's all about selling products that is a part of it. And I think that's where things are changing now. Is that it used to only be to try and sell to customers. But very much so, you know, brands, you know, brands are there as a system, as a, you know, as a tool to to help us in our workplace to look after each other and to look after and to, to find fulfillment in what we do as well. So I, th I think there's a, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm articulating that well, but what I'm, you know, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully what I'm going to try to say is is that I think brands are evolving that they're, they they touch different areas of our lives now, and they're not purely marketing tools to sell products or services. That they're about building ecosystems to look after people, and I think that's what great mature brands do is that they realise that it's not only for trying to get people to put money in your bank. It's um, you use them as a system um, to help organize and create safety and, you know, psychological safety and physical safety. You know, that's a big thing that sits on my shoulders as a leader of a business. I understand that there's, you know, there's 40 souls or so that 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 are under my leadership. So, you know, when 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 we are creating and creating values, it's it's to try and show that, look, well, we've got systems in place to help look after us all including me and 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 my hope as well is that um and it maybe leads us on to a point actually is that you know if, if you think about it that you know if you're trying to create a mature brand and you want to be the best brand in your category right and you want to lead then you have to act like a leader right and leaders are you know altruistic They're, they think less about themselves and more about the people that they impact and again, I think that's why we're getting to this nice maturity of branding and the thought of branding, where it's not just about selling products or services. Um, we have an we have a we have a responsibility to look after the world. It's not going to be here if we don't look after it. And yeah. you know, and you know, the, to coin the the example the guys used earlier, Patagonia, that we'll talk about shortly, I think, is that that they, you know they've been they've been working and thinking this way for 30, 40 years, but only now sort of you know, culture is catching up with it. And I think the more of that can rub off in people and the more of that thinking can happen um, and we start to look after and out for each other, um, you know, I, I think only goodness can come from that. Yeah. 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 
and just just add a little point on the on the question there. In the beginning, it is right. You have you know, like you have to establish, as Andrew said, you have to build the business. You have to establish by working on your product and services. But what the brand does more is if you're focused internally at building the culture. If you get the culture right, they're going to build the services and the products in a way that is you know creates the best thing in that value exchange with the you know with your clients, customers, whoever it may be. Um, you know, and that in turn it, it, you know, like they're it, they're putting the values that are internal into what they're doing. So the values are being shown. You're not talking about it because, you know, no person goes, hi, I'm so, you know, I value this and my personality is this. It's through your actions. It's through what yeah. you do, uh, you know, and that internal focus at the start and why that early stage, that is reflected very much in how you go about and do you, the products that you're doing, you know, the type of customer service that you want to have, the type of tone that you want to do. Is it friendly? You know, all these things help influence. It doesn't need to be wrapped up in a... Uh, marketing package and put out as a campaign all, all those stuff that is internal will be reflected in everything you do so that that's why it's well, where brand plays that massive role all the time it just sometimes yeah. it's more visible and sometimes it's more hidden um, and, and you know and and, and but if it, it, it's always there um, you know and, and the importance of the inside out approach uh, you know it, it is uh, you know we, we think is really vital yeah so, I, I mean, I guess what we're saying is, you know, it's, you know, mature brands that they, they develop that purpose. Um, but unlike a teenager who kind of looks around and goes, oh, everybody's wearing that kind of band T-shirt or a leather jacket or they're doing this with their hair. So I'm going to do it, too. Um, a purpose, a mature brand um, such as Patagonia goes, we don't care what anybody else is doing. We have this conviction and we're going to do it. And we're going to build on it. We're going to take profit, set that aside. We're going to hire people that are specifically um, tasked with pushing that purpose forward. Um, and and like and like we're saying here, you know, that they're starting to reap the benefit of that because now everybody's going, oh no, climate change. Um, but they've been doing it for for decades. Um, what are some What are some other mature brands um, that kind of come to mind uh, for you guys? And then we'll jump into uh, and then we'll kind of jump into Q and A because I see we're running out of time here. Yeah, well, um, maybe maybe an example for me that I've just noticed this week popping up, um, and I hadn't really thought about this, but you know, Brewdog is a is a brand that's on the has been on the tip of the tongue for many people for many years. But you know, they they've been known for their kind of punk ethos and disrupting the drinks industry. Um, now everything they did early on was, you know, they did a lot of kind of stunt based PR. They did a lot of things that would drive engagement, drive eye, drive eyeballs, and try and get people to look at them to grow a business. They, you know, they very cleverly um, figured out a model, the crowdfunding model, and got everyone to, to to invest in their business. Now, as they've grown as a business, um, you know, and, and at the size and scale they are, you know, they, they are now as big as the, the people that they were trying to disrupt, right? So they, they, they have that really challenging thing um, as, as a business because they're now, you know, it's very difficult to, 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 to almost pretend that you're, you know, you, you're still disrupting when you're at that scale. But where I see that they are starting to mature and they have matured and it's something that comes probably with that scale, size and scale is they have huge impact on this world. Mm -hmm. And so they're really starting to focus, you know, on sustainability, of course, at the size and scale and, and the effect that they have on the, on the world. Now you see people online and I look at comments, I go down feeds and oh, that, that's how, how punk is this? It's the most punk thing ever. It's the best thing. And and people almost seem to want to, to, to have them back when they were just disruptive and just doing PR. We're actually, you know, talking about sustainability, talking about becoming carbon neutral or, you know, raising awareness of that is going to create, they're using their influence for some good. Now, again, I'm not naive. They're selling beer and that's part of what they're doing. But What's the alternative that they don't talk about sustainability? They don't talk about you know improving the planet. Uh, that you know, in, in my eyes, you know, it, you know, it's the right thing to do. And the, and all of their messaging now, you know, are, are part of it. You know, should be focused around that and trying to use their power, their influence for good. Because as Stephen said, often our governments maybe don't do what we you know what, what what we hope to do. And I think you know that's where businesses with influence are able to make positive change. And I think we should only encourage when brands find purpose. You know, you know, you often see people, oh, they didn't have that purpose before. They didn't, but you know, if people are finding purpose and integrating it into their business and they're showing values and they're finding a stance, you know, you can imagine there's been an internal 
challenge there. There's something, and if they're getting there, I think you know, I think it can only be a good thing because it, you know, it helps hold them accountable. You know, uh, you know, if Brewdog are coming out with that stance, they have to then be accountable to that. So they're they're doing everything in their business to work backwards to that point. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm sure there'll be some other great examples as well that yourself, Keenan, or Stephen have as well. Yeah, well, I guess one of my favourite brands um, uh, in terms of Lego is also a good example. You know, like they, they have this strong belief about inspiring and developing, you know, the builders of tomorrow. And they, they enact that in many ways and, and none more so by being a, a massive advocate of, uh, you know, of STEM. You know, they do a lot of stuff science, engineering, technology, you know, a lot of stuff with women in science and things like that, you know, that goes beyond just the product, but it's what they believe in, you know, and they believe in that will make society a much better place, you know, that they'll they'll be able to then take the spirit of what it's about and what Lego's always been about, but enact that in many different ways that could come out into, you know, building better buildings, building better cities, building, you know, all these things to do with this coming back to what they believe in and finding the right ways to connect that up that allows them to have the impacts that they want and they're true to themselves, you know, uh, you know, and, and doing it in a way that has, uh, you know, influence and inspiration for many, many people, um, you know, and, and, and creates, uh, you know, like a hope and opportunity for people, you know, mm -hmm. and again, who, who, who doesn't want to be involved or, or, or be proud to wear a Lego t-shirt you know, when, when brands are doing things like that. Yeah, definitely. And, and be part of that tribe. Um, exactly. kind of carry that forward. Um, and it's the same with Patagonia again. Um, I know we're kind of like harping on and on about them, but you know, you, you, you feel proud to wear something that they've created, you know? Um, cool. Well, um, just for time, I know we've, we've kind of answered quite a few questions here. Um, but I do want to give people some takeaways just before we, before we go away. Um, if you guys want to know, just before we jump into the takeaways, just in, in case we run out of time, because I know people have to run. Um, if you're wanting to read more about this, uh, we do have a blog right right, right there <laughs> uh, that you can check out um, at madebrave.com slash blog. And a lot of this is, is kind of sitting in there if you want to go check it out and read up. Um, on that so it was probably articulated better in the blog than it was today by me <laughs> what you're I, I struggled are... to get my words to come out in the right order so i apologize to everyone that's had to listen to my rambling for the last little while it's a little so. bit more structured <laughs> good <laughs> um all right so uh takeaways F five minutes what, what do we got well, I don't know. Is it, is it maybe make more sense to kind of any questions anyone's got? There's a few questions in there. Try and give a bit of value back that way, or uh, we can do questions instead. Sure. I don't um, know if I I don't wrote, if I wrote takeaways. <laughs> I'm sure I could come up with some on the spot, but yeah. <laughs> um, how, how about this one from uh, from Gordon? Uh, he says to uh, to get all philosophical on a Friday. How much does a brand belong to itself? And how much does it belong to the consumers? Yeah, well, it, it no longer belongs to itself. It used to. It used to be what we say and put out into the world. And now very much it's what the world say about us. So I think it kind of takes us right back to the very beginning here of kind of reputation we talked about. And, you know, you almost don't, well, you kind of you, you get to control your reputation by how you behave. Um, but the world very much gets to say what your brand is in today's world. Yeah, it's it's influence, isn't it? You know, your, your decisions influence people's impressions of yourself, you know, and, you know, because brand is very much a reflection of self. You know, people choose to let a brand into, I like to think of it like a bubble. Everyone has a bubble. You need to earn the right to get into the bubble so that, they, you know, people have chosen you as a, a way that they, they can reflect themselves to others. And, um, you know, and I think, so you can influence it by doing these right things. Um, but what they say about it, as you said, Andrew, you know, that that's kind of where the true reputation is out there, uh, you know, and you have to allow them to inject themselves into your story, but give them the tools and the and the uh, information and the actions that allow them to say the things you want to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That. <laughs> uh, here's, here's one more just before we go. Uh, this one's from Toby Ross. He says, what do you think? Uh, uniquely separates building an agency brand versus a consumer brand? Mm. Or is there a huge difference? 
Well, they, they're, they're kind of commonalities between both. Um, you know, as an agency brand and a consumer brand, your brand has to look inward at your own business, as I mentioned, to kind of look after, you know, your people. And, you know, I, I think, you know, with any business of any shape and sort, you know, how you look after what is very much within your control, and that's the, that's what's in most of your control, um, will have impact to, to the outward facing brand. So that's going to affect, you know, if, if you know if you've got a consumer facing brand and you create products well the better your culture your uh, your ecosystem inside your business will the better those products are going to be created the better the, the the whole thing you know snowballs and and that's that's you know it's exactly the same on um an agency brand um i'm trying to think if i've got a better answer for that Stephen. is there anything in- well I, I think you know like if you think about it uh, you know in terms of human again if it's, you know, if communication is more about humans talking to humans, it kind of levels the playing field. Yes, there's some differences between uh, different types of brands, but but ultimately, if we are trying to connect to a person and we are thinking of our brand like a person, there's a lot of similarities um, within that. And, uh, you know, if we do the right things for what it would be like to be a good person, then, you know, an agency brand is very similar to a consumer brand, you know, and, and, and certainly if we're talking about Made Brave, the thing that attracted me, or one of the most things that attracted me is, a, you know, right at the start, you know, you wanted to use the Made Brave brand as a demonstration of how we could understand brand and um, not just show what we've done for others, but have that mix, you know, so that importance of building our own brand and looking at our own culture and being part of building from the inside, coming from somewhere that was, I built brands from the inside out as an, in, you know, an in-house role, that kind of duality was something that is really important. And I think it's something that's really important for, for all brands and for, you know, for agency brands um, and certainly stood us in good stead, um, you know, in our evolution. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that answered you, Toby. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, well, uh, I think we're out of time, but uh, thanks to, to, to everyone for uh, kind of sharing your lunch with us. Uh, I'm going to go get mine now. Um, like I said earlier, you know, there are a couple things you can do if you want to learn more. Um, you can go check out the blog uh, that just went out yesterday. Um, if you want to have a read through that, kind of gives you a little bit of structure, kind of, you know, probably help you figure out where you sit in those in those life stages and what you can do next to kind of uh, grow into the next one. Um, but then, of course, if you need help, you know, this is my, my little cell here. If you need help building a strategy for your brand or your business, um, if you're wanting to take your brand to the next level, uh, we do have a team. Um, that's very, very good at doing just that. Um, you can go to madebrave.com, click in the header. There's a little thing that says contact, uh, and you can talk to us. Um, so thanks to thanks again to everyone. Uh, hope you have a great Friday. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Take everyone. Care. See you soon. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.